Thanks for staying with us on The World Now. To our continuous coverage of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Russian President Vladimir Putin has said the deal that allowed Ukraine to export grain safely through the Black Sea will not be restored until the West meets its obligations to facilitate Russian agricultural exports. Speaking at a press conference with his Turkish counterpart, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, President Putin said there is no physical shortage of food, denying Western claims that Russia had stopped a food crisis. We have more in the following reports. These comments came after President Vladimir Putin met with Turkey's President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, who hoped to restart the agreement that allowed Ukraine to export grain and other goods. Russia halted its wartime Ukrainian grain export deal in July that allowed wheat and other food products to be exported from Ukraine to countries in Africa, the Middle East and Asia. The agreement was brokered by Turkey and the United Nations a year earlier and was critical in supplying wheat, barley, sunflower oil and other commodities that developing nations rely on. President Putin also said Russia was close to finalizing a deal that would provide free grain to six African countries. In opening remarks, President Erdogan said everyone is looking at the ground corridor issue. President Putin has also acknowledged this saying issues related to Ukraine crisis would also be discussed between the two leaders. Since Russia withdrew from the agreement, President Erdogan has vowed to help restart the grain initiative that aimed to avoid the food crisis in parts of Africa, the Middle East and Asia. The meeting comes as Ukraine has launched a counter-offensive against Moscow's invasion. Ukraine President Vladimir Zelensky announced Sunday he would replace Defense Minister Oleksiy Reznikov, saying the position requires new approaches. President Zelensky has also accused Moscow of targeting grain structures after Russian drones attacked a port city last month. An expert says Putin's next step may be using food as a weapon in the war. Well, joining us to discuss this is the chairman of the Russian chapter of Nigerians and Diaspora, Dr. Godwin Ibe. Thank you for joining us on The World Now. Since this grain deal stalled in July, I mean, it's been massive cry, you know, across the world. But that, how hopeful are you that this grain deal would actually be revived? If you can hear me, Dr. Ibe. If you can hear me, Dr. Ibe. I am Hello. asking about how hopeful you are that this grain deal between Russia and Ukraine could actually be revived. Yes, hello, can you hear me? Yes, please, I can hear you, Dr. Ibe. Uh, okay, great, great, great. Sorry, I, I missed the question due to technical issues. Uh, what was the question, please? Yes, I'm asking about your hope. How hopeful are you that the grain deal mm -hmm. would be revived and how sustainable do you think it would be considering the lingering war between Russia and Ukraine? Well, I, I'm optimistic. I, I always try to be optimistic given the direst... Uh, <laughs> Of situations, and I, I ho I'm hopeful that uh, the grain deal will be restored, or uh, at least uh, all sides have said. For example, the Russian side has said it's not a final stop, but it's a pause. So there's uh, a high chances uh, that it's going to be extended. But there are some concrete conditions that have been laid forward by the Russian side, for example, that led to its pulling out of the deal. And uh, if you don't mind, I could list them. But, um, I, you know, those, those are the conditions that we are waiting to see if uh, they will be fulfilled or not. Yeah, so my go ahead with that. And I was actually getting to that because uh, those points are actually critical and uh, they seem to be... Uh, Obstacles, because, you know, Putin has raised these concerns and he says that, uh, you know, these shortcomings need to be addressed if his country would be back on the deal. So let's talk about those conditions. Oh, yes. Uh, um, looking at the, look at these conditions, they look fair, uh, because the first one is that he's saying that, um, well, R R Russia's export of uh, fertilizers and grain should be allowed if Ukraine is allowed to export. I think that's fair. Uh, he also talks about import for agricultural, uh, spare parts of agricultural machinery. He says they should be allowed. I think that is fair. 
And uh, he also talks about connection of banks, especially banks connected with agricultural trade, like Ross Salesforce Bank in Russia, to be connected to streets, so that those streets can be facilitated. I think that's a good deal. Um, and last but not the least, his major concern was that most of the deal of the previous Green Deal didn't go to poor countries. He claims that 70% went to EU and other advanced countries, while only 3% went to poor nations or African nations. Well, we know that for those who are Ukrainians or who are on the Ukrainian side of this conflict, they would think that uh, for the fact that Russia was the one that, if you may use the word, invaded Ukraine, uh, then... It, has decided it, that... Yes, it might not be justified, you know, in any way. But then let's talk about the fact that Ukraine says it would not alter its stand on this matter. As a matter of fact, it's calling the move Russian blackmail. How do you react to that? Um, you know, there are lots of uh, terminologies in when those which are used, especially during a uh, period of hostilities. Um, it, it, the, the Russia reserve the right to use their own words. And if you tune to Russian public uh, media, you would uh, see lots of such kind of harsh rhetorics. But the fact of the matter is that a deal is a deal. If well, the problem was such a deal struck, yes, uh, every side agrees that such a deal was struck. And those deals involve connection of Russian banks, allowing Russian export. Nobody's contesting that. So if you made a deal, you signed something on paper, you just keep to it. Whether you like it, you don't like it, whether you have rhetorics or you don't have rhetorics, it's, it's, it's nobody's, it should be nobody's concern. And also, uh, Russia has said that they would export one million ton. Whether the grain is, deal is extended or not, it's, it, it uh, sacrifices, or rather it decides to supply one million ton of grain to be processed in Turkey, to be delivered specifically to poor nations. Mm -hmm. So I, I think uh, Russia is serious about uh, helping the developing countries in terms of grain and fertilizers. Now, just before we go, let's quickly talk about the Nigerian community in Russia. How has this conflict impacted members? Well, it's, it's impacting uh, members in the sense that uh, um, uh, members don't want to be in the, in the fight between two big elephants. Um, uh, we, we understand that politics change uh, and, and politicians change, elites change. But uh, we, we, we understand the value that both the East and the West add to the world. No one is an island. We understand that there's need for peace. There's need for corporations. Uh, many people's businesses who do businesses with either the East or the West might be affected in one way or not. Rather, might be, have been affected in one way or the other. And obviously, they want to see peace because uh, peace brings wealth and prosperity. Chairman, Russian Chapter of Nigerians and Diaspora, Dr. Gordon Ebe, thank you so much for talking to us on The World Now. Thank you so much for having me.